Let's see what the acceleration's like. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're we'll be talking about Chevy's 2.7 liter turbocharged four cylinder and whether or not this is a powertrain that you should go for. First and foremost, so a huge shout out thank you to the Larry Miller Chevy here in Provo for giving me some time with this truck so that I can talk about this topic. I'm going to include a link to their inventory in the description down below. And by the way, this truck is available for sale right now. If you're interested, check out the inventory. And so, yeah, with that being said, oh, also, link to my carbine guide in the description down below as well. Let's get into it. So let's quickly talk about the specs here of this engine. So first off, it's a turbocharged 2.7 liter four cylinder that goes through an eight speed automatic transmission. Fuel economy, 17 around town and then 20 on the highway is rated for this particular truck. Power outputs, 310 horsepower and then 430 pound feet of torque. It is one torquey boy. And this is a very techy engine. So first off, it's turbocharged, right? That's quite a bit of tech already, but it has auto stop start. It has cylinder deactivation, direct injection, variable valve timing, thermal management, and a continuously variable oil pump. That is quite a bit happening under the hood to basically uh, make this whole situation possible. Now we're gonna go over a couple of issues that could potentially affect this truck. Now the reason I'm saying potentially is it's not guaranteed, but there have been some higher mileage trucks that have had this issue. And this doesn't mean that it's a death sentence for the 2.7 liter four cylinder, right? There's issues with pretty much every modern vehicle, right? But let's at least talk about it. Uh, so first off is potential for carbon buildup. And that is because uh, fuel entering the system is under a lot less pressure than what you had with prior powertrains. And this is just kind of like a modern powertrain thing. This is not just a Chevy thing. Now, what a lot of automakers will do to kind of get around this lower pressure is they will do port injection. This, however, does not have that. And so there have been some higher mileage examples that have had quite a bit of uh, buildup. Another issue that could potentially affect this issue that could also potentially affect the 6.2 that Chevy has, and we could make a whole nother video about that if you guys want, uh, is just lifter issues that have been popping up quite a bit. Um, basically because the height of the lifters is variable, there's just a lot of work that has to happen um, to basically make the whole system work. It's a lot more complex than the old big blocks that Chevy used to have. And obviously this is not a big block. This is turbocharged 2.7 liter four cylinder. Uh, but basically there's just a lot more work that has to be done. And so there is potential for the whole system to fail, which is obviously not a good thing. And yeah, there you go. Now that is the first part of the video. Now we're gonna take this out and drive it. And I'm gonna go over the rest of the pros and the cons here of the 2.7 liter four cylinder to help you guys decide if this is the powertrain that you should go for. I of course picked like the hottest day to do this video. I am gonna be like coming out of a sauna after this because it is so toasty in this truck just because of where it was placed uh, facing the sun and all that. Um, but anyways, let's talk about this turbocharged 2.7 liter four cylinder. Now the reason I wanted to make this video is I've kind of noticed a trend where trucks with this engine tend to sit on the lots at Chevy dealerships a little bit longer than trucks with 6.2 V8s or 5.3 liter V8s, frankly, if a truck has a 6.2 V8, it doesn't sit in the lot at all. Like it's just instantly sold. If it has a 5.3 V8, same thing. Uh, whereas again, trucks with this 2.7 liter turbocharged four cylinder, uh, they, they seem to be spending a little bit of time on dealer lots. And so I'm, you know, basically digging into this. And you know, this video is my attempt to figure out you know, why people are not uh, going for this powertrain. And we're first gonna talk about the driving dynamics of the powertrain, and then we'll kind of dive into some of the stuff we mentioned at the beginning of the video um, with potential, uh, you know, reliability concerns and everything with this powertrain. Hopefully we can kind of figure out the uh, bigger picture with this whole situation. So first off, let's see what the acceleration's like. I mean, for a four cylinder in a pickup truck, that is so solid. Like it's smooth, it's quick. The eight speed is really good. It, it's, it feels it feels super dialed in. Like no complaints from an acceleration perspective. I feel like that is just, yeah, great. Um, so I, I don't think that that's bothering people. And again, since this is turbocharged, you know, being at 4,600 feet elevation here, this feels great. And it actually makes this engine feel quicker than the 5.3 V8 because even though the 5.3 has more horsepower, it has less torque. And again, it's naturally aspirated. And so you have quite a bit more power loss with the 5.3. And so uh, funny enough, like driving this truck around, it feels peppier than the 5.3. And so that is solid and it's quiet too. 
Like, yeah, when you get on it full throttle, you can you can hear the four cylinder sounds. Um, I don't think those are bad sounds though, per se. I think those actually are pretty decent for a four cylinder. And so, I, I, again, I don't think that that is necessarily the issue. Yeah, it's so torquey. It just gets up and moves. So yeah, I don't think the driving dynamics are an issue. Um, now I have seen some posts on fuel economy and, and here's my guess is, you know, some people have been stating that they're not able to quite get the EPA numbers with this truck. And you know, it obviously depends on the region you live in. It depends on your driving style too. You do have to kind of get into the throttle a little bit with this truck to kind of have a little bit of fun with it. And so I'm wondering if people are diving the throttle just really hard with this uh, truck. And so there's constantly the turbos and then that's just making it so it's difficult to get, you know, solid fuel economy uh, with the truck. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, it could be up to the drivers. It could be something, you know, with the powertrain where it's just, you know, how it's set up. It's just, it's just hard to get those ratings. Some vehicles are like that, right? Like uh, Ram trucks, for example. Not trying to call them out, but I'm going to call them out because I've owned several. It's like impossible to get the EPA ratings with them. Like every single, I've owned three Ram trucks and every single truck gets like significantly worse. So like, for example, I owned a 2018 Rebel. It was rated for 15 around town and then, sorry, it was, yeah, 15 around town and then like 21 on the highway. I might, my numbers might be off by a little bit, but I think 15 around town, 21 on the highway. And I got like 12 or 13 miles per gallon. And then my 2019 Rebel, same exact thing, 15 around town, 21 on the highway. And I got like 12 or 13 miles per gallon. So it's, yeah, it's kind of like, it seems like it's a truck thing, right? It seems like trucks just don't get the fuel economy ratings that you think that they, well, at least, you know, what the EPA ratings are on them. Um, but there've also been some complaints with the 5.3 on that as well. So again, it, I'm gonna leave that one up in the air, um, but I, I don't think that it's necessary. I think it's probably more with the driver than it is with the truck, but again, it could be wrong. Um, and I, I really like the like how quiet this is. Again, getting into it, it, it is weird. It's definitely weird hearing a four cylinder, you know, when you're accelerating the truck. I am noticing I'm having to dive in the pedal a little bit more. So I'm wondering if that's kind of contributing to that lower fuel economy. Now, let's obviously talk a little bit more about the reliability. I kind of mentioned that in the beginning part of the video. Uh, so here's the deal. These issues that everyone's talking about here with the 2.7 um, that have been documented aren't affecting every single truck. And on top of that, this is happening at pretty high mileage, like close to 100,000 miles, which I understand for some truck buyers that might not be like super high mileage. I, I understand. Um, but it's still happening at higher mileage, right? And so it's not like you're going to buy one of these trucks and then all of a sudden you're going to have lifter issues and you're going to have carbon build up right off the lot. Like it's, it's going to take some time if those issues do develop um, but on top of that you know chevy does have a powertrain warranty so like you know something happens within the powertrain warranty it's like you're fine you're covered under warranty so yeah it's it's one of those things where like you know there's going to be some things they're going to have to work out because this is a new powertrain and they just increase the power figures for this uh new generation of uh silverado right for the refresh and so yeah there, there is going to be some things they're going to have to work through with it but you know, I, I think they'll figure it out. And I think the fix that they end up, they'll end up probably going for is maybe changing the trucks to port injection or something. Who knows, right? Time will tell on that. And now that we have a clearing, we got to get another acceleration because this engine's fun. I, I saw some comments about turbo lag with this truck. Every turbocharged engine has turbo lag. Like that's a turbocharged engine thing. It's not that bad. It's not like better or worse than any other turbocharged engine. It's fine. And so, you know, I guess we can uh, kind of come full circle here on the Silverado with the 270. Here's my personal opinion. And, and I've mentioned this in several Silverado reviews, but you know, we'll kind of talk about this in this dedicated video. I like the 6.2 a lot because it sounds great and it gets pretty good fuel economy considering the fact that it's a big 6.2 liter V8 and it's got great power even at elevation because you know 420 horsepower 460 pound feet of torque it's it is solid even at elevation um and then you know on top of that it's pretty reliable yes everyone always talks about the lifter issues with the 6.2 but again you've got the powertrain warranty for a reason and if you're really worried then just trade in the truck before you get out of the powertrain warranty because it's such a cool engine the 5.3 right that's the one that's good old reliable i guess is what you could uh call it right and it's it's a super solid powertrain 
my only gripe with that powertrain is it just doesn't feel as solid as this at elevation from an acceleration perspective. It's still, it's still a, a V8, it's still great. It just doesn't feel as good as this. Now this obviously is not, you know, as they call it, tried and true as the other two engines, especially the 5.3. The 5.3 is the most tried and true that Chevy has. Uh, but that being said, you know, there could be worse issues, right? There's there's so many other cars that have powertrains that are having failures that are way, way worse than what this is having. A little bit of carbon build up, yeah, that's not great. That's not ideal, but that's better than like complete engine catastrophe, right? Complete engine failure. So I know I might sound like an idiot saying that, but that's okay. <laughs> um, the point that I'm trying to make is if I were to spec out a new Silverado, my number one pick personally would be the 6.2, but if I wanted to go the safe route, I go 5.3. Um, and you know, if I was okay with, you know, not for sure issues happening, but potential issues, then yeah. I would be like, okay, you know what, let's try out the 2.7. I, I really like it. Um, but I, I just, I don't think it's all doom and gloom like a lot of these outlets are making it seem to be. I think it's one of those things where, yeah, there is something that could potentially happen with this truck, but the chances of it affecting you are not 100%. And, you know, for the most people buying this, they're gonna love it. And if you own the 2.7, let us know in the comment section below your experience. Let us know if it's been doom and gloom or if you've loved it because I've seen so far people have commented that they've loved this powertrain. And so I still think it's worth going for. Um, but like I said, if you're really worried, 5.3, they still make the 5.3. That's because something's up for our video on this turbocharged 2.7 liter Silverado. Hopefully that helped you guys out. And with that being said, again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Lurch Miller Chevy here in Provo for giving me some time with this truck. Check out the inventory in the description down below. I'll see you guys.